Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a homemade exponential equation. We have 4 to the power 4 to the power x equals 2 to the power 2 to the power x. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'm also going to show you a graph at the end. Now think about this equation first of all, is this possible at all? You have a larger base, a larger exponent, but it's the same x that satisfies both of these equations. So think about this for a second and see if you can guess the solution. And then let's go ahead and verify. All right, so one thing that makes this problem easier is that the bases are kind of related, four and two. So I can go ahead and write the four as two to the second power, and then raise it to the four to the x, and then this is gonna stay the same. Now I have the same base, but let's go ahead and multiply these exponents. Uh, this becomes 2 to the power 2 times 4 to the power x equals 2 to the power 2 to the power x. Now here's the bases. They are the same, so the exponents should also be the same, right? Well, a lot of times peop when people get questions like a to the x equals a to the y, you can basically say that uh, x equals y or a can be some special number like 1 or 0 or negative 1. But a safer method would be to divide both sides by a to the y, set it equal to 1 and then subtract the exponents and then look at different cases, you know, how you can get 1. So we can do that, obviously. Let's go ahead and do it. If you divide both sides by 2 to the 2 to the x, you get 2 to the power 2 times 4 to the x minus 2 to the x and that equals one. Make sense? Okay, so that's one way to approach it. Uh, since our bases are not uh, variables or they're not one or negative one, you don't have to go with this. You can just directly set the exponents equal to each other. This equals that. So let's go ahead and use this approach for the real solutions and then we're going to look at what we can do with the, for the complex solutions. So from here, let's forget about this for now, and set 2 times 4 to the x equal to 2 to the x. So obviously you can divide both sides by 4 to the x. Let's do it. And this gives us 2 over 4 to the power x equals 2. But 2 fourths is 1 half. So you have 1 half to the power x equals 2. But 2 can also be written as 1 half to the power negative 1. Because it's the reciprocal. So from here we get x equals negative 1. Yes, that magic number that we were talking about at the beginning was negative 1. That allows us to get the same answer by using a larger base and a larger exponent. Okay, and the same x. So think about it. 4 to the power negative 1 is 1 fourth. So this is 4 to the power 1 fourth. And 2 to the power negative 1 is 1 half. So this is 2 to the power 1 half. Now, why are these equal? Because if you think about 4 as 2 squared, this is 2 to the power 2 fourths, which is the same as that one. Make sense? So negative 1 is a solution. Okay, let's see how we can find something about complex solutions. All right, are there any complex solutions, first of all? That's something to th uh, think about. So we got 2 to the power 2 times 4 to the x equals 2 to the power x, right? That's what we got from here. And now by setting the uh, exponents equal to each other. So now let's go ahead and see how we can go to complex solutions from here. We're going to go ahead and divide by 2 to the x. That's going to give me 1. And then I'll subtract the exponents. And I'm going to get 2 to the power 2 times 4 to the x minus 2 to the x equals 1. Here's the critical part. If you do want to get the complex solutions, you're going to use, I think you must, right? you're going to use Euler's formula and polar form. How do you write something in polar form? Well, in general, a complex number, z, can be written as r times e to the power i theta. If you wanted to get a little bit of lecture videos on this one, go ahead and check out my other channel, A plus bi, and then you're going to see a bunch of uh, lecture videos that explain all these things. Anyways, so let's go ahead and think about this first of all. 2 can be written as e to the power ln 2, right? x can be written as e to the power ln x. So that's what we're going to replace 2 with because I need e at the base, Euler's number. And then for the right-hand side, I do need to be able to write 1 in polar form. 
And one is basically one plus zero i. If you think about it, it's basically one comma zero. Its modulus is gonna be one, and obviously it makes a two pi or zero radians with the real axis, right? So uh, theta is gonna be zero, or let's just use two pi, or we can use multiples of two pi. You can basically write it as two pi n, okay? Multiples of two pi. And r is gonna be one. So now let's go ahead and use this formula to write one in polar form. One can be written as e to the power two pi n. Easy, right? I mean, not too bad. And now let's go ahead and plug these in. Okay. And why didn't we write one as e to the power ln one? Uh, that wouldn't be very helpful. Okay. So let's go ahead and replace e, um, not e, with two with e to the ln two. So it's going to be e to the power ln 2 to the power 2 times 4 to the x minus 2 to the x equals e to the power 2 pi n. Awesome. What do you do from here? Multiply the exponents like this and then set them equal to each other. Our goal is to solve for x, remember? So let's go ahead and divide both sides by ln 2 and we should get the following, right? Now, at this point, you have to think about something. How do you solve for x, right? So we kind of need to use substitution. Let's go ahead and call this t, and this becomes t squared. So you get 2t squared minus t equals a constant. Let's go ahead and call this constant c for now, just for sake of simplicity, because I'm going to use the quadratic formula. And from here, t is going to become negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 minus 4ac, that's going to be plus 8c, okay? And all of that is divided by 4 because it's 2a. So that's the t values. t is the 2 to the power of x, so we're going to set it equal to 2 to the power of x. And guess what? You can still use another, um, you know, polar form from here, and things kind of get complicated, right? But anyways, um, yeah, this can turn into something like you can replace the 2 with e to the power ln 2 and then raise it to the power x it's going to look like this and then set it equal to this and of course c must be replaced with whatever that is eventually but notice that c does not by the way we forgot something it's supposed to be 2 pi n i i forgot the i i'm sorry about that so let's go ahead and replace the i everywhere and that should give us um well it's just going to change the c right so c is a complex number so the square root of a complex number is going to be another level of complexity. I'm not going to go into all the details, but this is going to be pretty painful, as you can imagine. But I'll just show you the basics. Here we can basically write this as, by the way, for, again, uh, let's simplify the problem a little bit. Just focus on the positive uh, solution. But the problem is you have a complex number on the right-hand side, so you've got to be able to write it in polar form. How? You're going to have to write it something like r e to the i theta, where theta is going to be the 10 inverse of, uh, let's say our number is r times, okay, suppose our number is a plus b i, right, and then uh, tangent theta is going to be b over a, so you can basically replace theta with 10 inverse b over a if it's in the right quadrant, otherwise you're going to have to modify it, and r is just going to be coming from here. So anyways, so the idea is once you get something like e to the x ln 2 equals r e to the i theta, you're going to be ln'ing both sides one more time, and then that's going to bring the powers, and you're going to be able to solve for x. Let's go ahead and do it, assuming that we know r and theta. Again, that's going to be super complicated. x ln 2 equals ln r, that's a real number, plus i theta. And since we're looking for x, it's going to be ln r plus i theta over ln 2. Again, r and theta need to be determined from that equation. Good luck with that. But that's basically what it is. We know what t is, and we know what c is. This is c. c is a complex number, so on and so forth. Actually, that's an imaginary number, by the way. So you're just going to have to plug it in and work with it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.